I'm Barbara. I'm a compulsive overeater and bulimic. I weigh and measure three meals a day, write it down, committed to a sponsor. I don't eat in between meals, no matter what. Absence is the most important thing. My abstinence date is May 14th, 2015. So six years back. And I'll just quickly say, for those of you who have come back, takes a lot of courage and a lot of, um, just a lot of courage to come back. I'm a comeback kid. If you were to say to me, um, when I was first absent for 12 and a half years on the gray sheet, um, that I would ever go out and eat, I'd say absolutely not. But my story is I went out I didn't go out on the gray sheet food plan. I went out in another program with a drug and eventually a drink. The lie, the drug, the drink, um, and never told anybody. And continued to weigh, measure, and sponsor and do my Cambridge gray sheet program, never telling anybody that I had picked up alcohol in the gray sheet, because if you read the gray sheet, you don't drink. So um, I'm really bad with dates and times. It's just, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, but it was a while before I um, came clean. And coming clean when you're in program is really hard. And we're all different, but I, um, I couldn't tell anybody that I had picked up because all my underlying stuff of fear of people, what they're gonna think of me, fear of failure, fear of um, abandonment, fear of not being loved, fear of not being understood, all the caca in that brain. Um, And so much of it was about self pride, judgment, all of this work that I had always been working on since I came into 12 step. But the truth is, that's just my story. And all my story can do is say to anybody out there who's new or who has never, because I think the person who's been absent for a long time needs to hear stories to remind them why they don't pick up that first bite. Nobody, um, you know, put the food and drugs and alcohol in my mouth. I can come and I can go to poor me, this happened and that happens. And that's what happens when most of us come into program. It's all about poor me. This is what's happening to me. Um, This is what I can't do. It's all about fear, doubt and insecurity. And that's what happens when you are a person who is riddled with addiction. My number one addiction, and I'm very multi-addicted, but absolutely unequivocally, my number one addiction is the food. And that was my earliest addiction. The food is the only place in the world where people, nobody can take it away from you. And um, literally, you know, and the only time I wanted, like I'd go to therapy and say, never really talking about that I had an eating disorder because I didn't even know I had one because for me, this is about shame and hiding. Um, I would say to my therapist, I just want to go into jail just so I don't eat. Like I want my hands to be held tightly so I don't eat. And nobody in the world is going to understand that except you guys. Um, We're all the same, (laughs) no matter what our body sizes are, no matter what those conditions underlying, um, we just all have the fickle, you know, I got a certain body, I manifested in over 20 something years of bulimia and drugs and alcohol. But when I got pregnant and I put down all the stuff and meanwhile, 
I'm a, I was just like a cigarette smoker. I was an athlete. Every, I ate well because I grew up in a family where everything was like we eat on the gray sheet. And there were no in-between meals either, except the only thing is it wasn't weighed and measured. But I knew everything from the earliest childhood about food and what was healthy. And yet um, I could never stop eating. I don't, you can have all the intelligence, all of that. All I know is, which I lost my train of thought, what I wanted to say, but I lost it, is that um, I could never stop eating. And for me, eating is about hiding. Um, I was a party girl, loved to drink and drug and be a party girl, but I don't really pick out with people. I didn't ever have an eating partner because there's so much shame. And in my culture and in my family coming from middle, upper Jewish class, New York, be smart, look good, be successful, and all the ex external stuff of how to survive in my life. I learned how to survive. I did not learn how to live. Everything in me is of survival instinct. And that comes from not being able to tell the truth and doing things as fast as I possibly can. That's the kind of addict I am. There are some people like I was a sugar addict. I didn't know that until I got into Reishi. Some people were like carbs, they're tired, they lay on the couch. I don't think I ever laid on the couch in my life. I didn't know how to sit because I was going on adrenaline my whole life. And under that adrenaline was utter fear that I didn't know I had. And mind you, I like, all the messages were look good. If you don't look good and you get fat, you won't be loved. And I had beautiful parents and I had a loving father and I had a rageaholic mother and I love her too. My father died at 50. My twin sister committed suicide. Both my mother's brothers committed suicide. I have a very mentally ill older sister. She's not medicated. She's in a straitjacket. My family is a mental illness. If you go back into generational Jewish people, whatever where we come from, Irish, like suffering, pain, having to leave, like all of this stuff. And in, you know, a lot of Jewish religion, people eat. In my family, it was very controlled, but food was the most important thing. But I was the one that lied at five and blamed my twin sister for eating that first bite. Shame. Came into program through other rooms. Good stuff happened in my life. I divorced my husband, who is like one of my dearest friends today. We have two beautiful children in our 30s. Um, they're in their 30s. I'm a grandmother. In fact, I'm in Washington, D.C., Remember, you can go anywhere and do anything in gray sheet, weighing and measuring, going on airplanes, going through security. This time I went through security and I got stopped. I'm like, I know everything in my food bag, which by the way, I'm going to DC. I'm not going to a desert island, but you know, it was something stupid. I forgot to empty my bottle of water. And like, she's looking at all this stuff going, wow. I'm like, yeah, I'm a baker. I make a lot of baked goods. And like, she was laughing and she goes, that looks really healthy. And I, and I said, she said, I'd like that kind of food. Meanwhile, she was 400 pounds. And I said, oh, listen, go on the internet. There's a program called Grace She's is Anonymous. And she's like, whoa. Um, but so what if I, I know I'm all over the place, but what does that have to do with everything and everything and everything? The food, the food, the food. 12 and a half abstinence, years abstinence, sober, clean, went out for 11 months, eating, drinking, drugging, back, older woman. I was in my late 50s, picking up heavy duty drugs running my own business for 23 years, five minutes left, thanks, son. And back with my head in the toilet, eating quantity of food, I can't even tell you. 
and my husband who had never, or my children who had never seen me wasted at a holiday. I was wasted. Um, and only once, because I don't have addicts in my family, my daughter said, if I ever see you like this again, you will never like be a babysitter for my grandchild. You know, meanwhile, she wasn't pregnant. You know, my family, people are not addicts. Like they operate differently, but they know how I am. And they know that their mother weighs and measures her food. And that anytime they're always there saying you need anything. Everybody in my life supports my abstinence. My, hus my husband, my son, I'm here visiting. My son works in the White House. And I just have to tell a funny story. 10 years ago, he worked in the White House. So figure out who the president was then. I went to the White House four times. And I weighed and measured my food. And at the VP's house, I weighed and measured my food. You want to be ashamed? It's like, I don't have to go into detail and tell them like I had my head in the toilet. It's what I do. It's who I am. It's like the people around me, anybody I ever meet, you know, people say, I hate going to people's houses. Every time I go to somebody's house, I say, I love you. I'm here because I love you. And I'll bring back up, you know, all of this stuff. Like if you're around people that like love you, why do they don't care what you do? I have felt ashamed my whole life. I have pretended my whole life. I'm too effing old to pretend because it's a killer. So I know I did not make much sense, but that's all right. Because when I'm in DC, I drink a lot of coffee. Um, and I just want to say, I come here, I'm like cooking a storm up in my son and daughter-in-law's apartment. They love my gray sheet food. And I cook in quantity and I can cook for 20 people. It's like more the merrier. Well, that's me. But The God of my understanding, and I'll end, is about my great, sorry, the God of my understanding is about me doing the gray sheet, about me being kind, helping another, doing service, finding out the service I'm comfortable with, and most important, not telling people what to do. I don't know what works for anybody other than I have a prescription for my food plan, it works. Um, and unless you are ready and know, if you know this is the easier, softer way, this is absolutely the greatest place in the world. So I apologize if I'm all over and I swear I'm not gonna drink this much coffee again for a long time. In the end, I'm a drug addict. Give me anything that makes me feel good. I want. So thanks.